Our next problem is example 18 on page 9 x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 equal to 21 where each xi is a positive integer that means xi is greater than equal to 0 for all i. So this is an equation we have five variables they add up to 21 and their values are all positive and integer that is an important point they are all integer we are trying to count how many different solutions are there for this equation that means how many different ways these five positive integers can add up to 21 what does it have to do with the generalized permutation combination that we have learned we can view this problem like this so each of these are your buckets so we have five buckets and their values are these donuts that you have or balls that you have in each bucket so if there are uh, six here seven here zero here three here that adds up to 16 and 5 here so that's one solution another one would be one here 0 here 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 and 20 here okay so now you are starting to see the similarity between this problem and the donut problem that you you did in the last example 17 so so this is a generalized permutation and combination problem for this part a we need to find out what is n and what is r then we plug in the formula we understand so n is like the total values total number of donuts total number of dots so for this problem n is 21 r is how many different types how for r combination so how many different baskets are there five so this is the value total value on the right hand side of the equation and this is number of variables so the formula is 5 plus 21 minus 1 choose 21 which is 25 choose 21 12,650 that is your final answer so given a problem like this you have to understand that this is a problem discussing with generalized permutation and combination so for this particular problem how do you visualize it and now that you know that which problem which type of a problem this is what theorem to use you just have to figure out what is n for this problem and what is r once you know you plug it in the formula you get your answer okay now for part b where x1 this particular variable is greater than or equal to 5 we have solved problems like this this is at least problems so the value of x1 is at least 5 we know how to solve it we are going to use that concept so give x1 a 5 so put 5 donuts here in the first basket so how many are left 21 minus 5 16 left so if we write a new equation for this let's say y1 plus y2 plus y3 
plus y4 plus y5 equal to 21 minus 5 16. So this is our new equation and y1 is x1 minus 5. So now we are trying to find out they, these all yi's can be greater than or equal to 0 because we already took 5 for x1 and put it in y1. So that's done. That is taken care of. So we just have to do that. These There are 5 variables. They are all positive integers now because this restriction has been handled here. So 5 positive integers add up to 16. So our new n is 16 r is same as 5 so the formula is 5 plus 16 minus 1 to 16 which is 20 choose 16 48 45 okay so this is how we solve at least problems Next, we see part C, x2 less than or equal to 3. So less than or equal to, that means it is a an at most type of problem. We have done this too. We use the complement method and we solve this problem. So what is the universal set or the original set? That would be the answer of part A. And what is the complement set? So what is complement of x2 less than or equal to 3? So that is number of solutions with x2 greater than or equal to and this is important 4. The complement of x2 less than or equal to 3 is x2 greater than or equal to 4. Okay. This is total. So answer of part A. We know this. And this is what we have to calculate. This is at least version. So we know how to do this. This is five variables 21 minus 4 minus 1 choose 21 minus 4 okay so let's write the whole thing again Five plus twenty one minus four is seventeen. Choose seventeen. This is twenty five. Choose twenty one minus twenty one. Choose seventeen. This is twelve six fifty minus five nine eight five equals to six 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 five. That's the solution. So for part C, now we know how to solve at most problems. Next the last part, part D, x1 greater than or equal to 5 and x2 is less than or equal to 3. So x1 is 
doing at most sorry x1 is doing at least 5 x2 is doing at most 3 and this is similar to the last problem from example 17 one is at least one is at most and we know how to solve that we are going to use the complement method we are going to figure out what are what is the big set what is the small set and we do the subtraction and we find out the final answer. So what is the big set? Number of distributions with x1 greater than or equal to 5 at least minus the complement is number of distributions or you can call the number of solutions with x1 is still at least 5 and we do the complement for the at most part. So the complement of x2 less than equal to 3 is x2 greater than equal to 4 and we have seen that in part C. Now that they are both at least problems now we can solve them so the first part is 5 plus 21 minus 5 because x1 is already greater than or equal to 5 minus sorry minus 1 choose 21 minus 5 minus how about the complement set this is still 5 plus 21 minus so 5 is already here chosen for x1 4 already in x2 so 5 plus 4 9 are gone 21 minus 9 minus 1 choose 21 minus 9 so this is the size of the big set this is the size of the complement set. We subtract, we get our final answer. Let's simplify these values. 5 plus 16 minus 1, choose 16 minus 5 plus 12 minus 1, choose 12. So this is 20, choose 16 minus 16 choose 12 this value is 48 45 minus 18 20 so the final answer is 30 25 okay now just like the part c of example 17 if we draw the venn diagram it would look something like this. So this is the universal set. So total. The size we calculated in the solution of part A which is 12,650. Inside it there is this big set which is just x1 greater than or equal to 5 okay with this constraint so that size is how much we calculated it's 48 45 so this one is this and there is a small subset inside it the complement set this one is x2 greater than or equal to 4 the size is 1820 we calculated it here and this is our answer this part so the big set x1 greater than or equal to 5 and the small set which is both x1 greater than or equal to 5 and x2 greater than or equal to 4 this subset is not just x2 greater than or equal to 4 it is x1 greater than or equal to 5 
and x2 greater than equal to 4. So that was 1820 and we subtracted whatever is left that is our answer 3025. Okay. Next is how many different ways to distribute indistinguishable objects into distinguishable boxes. What does that mean? The objects are indistinguishable, that means they are all same, but the boxes are distinguishable. That means you can tell them apart. It's like the boxes are numbered, like there is the first box, second box, third box, or they are colored, the red one, the blue one, the green one, the yellow one, something like this. So, if we have our indistinguishable objects and we are trying to distribute them into n distinguishable boxes, then this is the formula for that. Okay. Now, pay attention to what R and N means. What R and N means, you always have to pay attention to that before you learn or memorize the formula. Otherwise, you are going to plug in incorrect values for R and N and you are going to get a wrong answer. So here for this problem, R is the number of objects, N is the number of boxes and this is the formula that you get for the number of distributions.